Hello, everybody, and welcome to my pop-up podcast where I'm talking about the American Song Contest. Now, this is week five of the competition. I know that this video is coming out a little bit too late. I know that by the time you're watching this, then the first semifinal has happened. And I apologize, I'm still in the Czech Republic, but I will be flying back to the States this week. So everything should be under control by next week, hopefully. We'll see. <laughs> but in this episode, we are talking about everyone who moved on from week four, and then we're talking about 11 performances from week five. And at that point, we will have talked about all 56 songs that have been in this competition. And it's been a lot, <laughs> but it's been a lot of fun. So after this, we're moving on to the semifinals, and then the final is only a few weeks away. I hope you guys have been enjoying this series. Uh, if you are more into the audio side of things, it is available on Spotify as well. Spotify and Apple Podcasts. With all that being said, let's jump into week five of the American Song Contest. So finally, we have seen the last week of performances before moving on to the semifinals. Uh, let's start out with the jury results, jury results for week four. Now they've definitely, they've done this differently every week. <laughs> and I think it is because the show is still finding their, their rhythm, you know, this week there was basically just no buildup. They didn't even bring back the performers from the week before, which honestly, I think that's totally reasonable. I think it is. They're probably flying back these performers just to be on screen for the first five minutes while they announced who is moving on. Uh, which, yeah, I guess I can see why they decided not to bring them back. But also then we missed their reaction of of like, oh, being announced that they're moving on. So there's a trade off there. But yeah, it it does seem a bit unnecessary to fly back all these performers for the next week when they're not even performing. Anyway, uh, so talking about week four, we had already found out that Alan Stone had been the jury vote. His song was a bit of both. Uh, he's from Washington State. I didn't write that down, uh, but I think I remember he's from Washington State. And I got to tell you guys, like, I, that song is absolutely one of my top favorites. Now that I've heard all 56 songs, that is for sure in my top five. It might be my number one. I'm not sure yet, <laughs> but oh gosh, or am I pretty sure that might be my top song? All right, we'll get to predictions and all that nonsense later. Um, but he was the jury vote. Very happy about that. And then we found out that the second person to move on was Jared Lee who is from Massachusetts and his song was Shameless. Thought this was a like a very good choice. He was in the lead of like he was like the jury's lead all the way through the episode up until the final performance. And I liked the song as well, so I did think that was a good choice for moving on. And then the third person, this is okay. I know I've said this a couple episodes in a row, but I wish we knew exactly what the audience ranking was and how that matched up with the jury ranking. Because if they're combining jury and audience votes, we might have a misrepresentation of like who was actually get receiving more votes from the audience, you know? Um, so that's just kind of like a, a little side note. But uh, so far with this week, I mean, it's like exactly what I was hoping for. Um, third place was Stella Cole, which from Georgia song was DIY, which I was obsessed with. Uh, so I was happy to see that the audience did send that one through. And then the last one was the only song out of the four that surprised me. I was definitely surprised that New Hampshire moved on. Uh, Mari with her song Fly. I guess I'm surprised that one moved on because to me it was too generic of a song. But I remember thinking she performed it really well. She started out the show, lots of energy. So as a performer, she was great. The song itself was a li little too generic for me. 
So I think that's why I was surprised. Um, I just want to double check. So three out of my four favorites moved on. The only one that didn't move on was Nevada, which was the Crystal Method. Now, maybe that's because their song wasn't even available on Spotify on Spotify. Like <laughs> we have no way of listening to them. Yeah, that's also interesting. So now that we've seen, yeah, their performances were already two weeks ago at this point and all of the numbers still kind of match up on Spotify. Uh, DIY now has over 400,000 plays. It's still the number one song from week four followed by a bit of both at 166,000. And then third place is Arizona, which is uh, uh, Las Marias La Finiquera. La Finiquera. I hope I'm saying that right. And after that, it kind of drops down quite a bit to 20,000. And then we're getting into like 11,000. So Fly, the fourth, the fourth place performance only has 11,000 plays on Spotify. It's like maybe like third from the bottom. So it kind of confirms my surprise, I guess. It's like that song didn't really stand out, but it moved on. So so that was the results from week four. And I did mention that it was a bit anticlimactic because, yeah, they didn't bring back the performers. So they just kind of listed them off didn't show any excited reactions, and then they just moved on to the show. <laughs> so it just felt felt kind of weird or just felt, yeah, anticlimactic, you know? But let's move on. We are going to talk about the performances this week. Uh, so in general, I remember thinking all of the things I was really excited about from the previous week were like, okay, they've made some improvements with like you know, not going too over the top with the dancers and the graphics and uh, the audio, I remember, was an improvement. And then this week, it was like, never mind. (laughs) I take all that back. Uh, There were several performances that were a bit of like a sensory overload. So we'll we'll get to that as they come up. But um, yeah, otherwise, it was another solid week of performances. And now that we've seen all 56, I can, I guess, I guess I wasn't surprised that this week was also really solid. Um, we've had five weeks of it now. And overall, everyone did really well. And it seems like everyone really had the chance to put on an exciting performance. Or if they had, I don't know how much of the vision was the performers or how much was like whatever production team they were put with behind the scenes but I thought everyone did a really great job and that gives me hope that hopefully this isn't a one and done type of show I do think this type of show needs another year to really to really kick off you know we all we also have to see what happens after this whole show ends when we have a winner and when we have some some of these standout songs like if these songs start getting on the radio that's when I think people will really start paying attention, right? Because if we start hearing these songs on the radio and someone's like, who's that? That's when we can say, oh, they were on the American Song Contest. And that might be the first time these people are hearing of the show. So that's what I'm hoping for. And I'm also hoping that more than just one performer will end up uh, getting this like radio deal. I think, yeah, that's coming up later where we get to meet one of the actual jury members and he explains that the winner of the American Song Contest, they their song will get put into rotation, which is huge. I could not imagine being one of these performers and their song makes it into rotation on like regular radio. And but I hope that they're not gonna just limit it to the winner. You know, I think any song that's that good should receive that type of airtime, you know, and it would be so refreshing to get some new artists on the radio. I'm thinking of this, the pop stars that are on the radio. It's like once they finally make it on the radio, then that's all you hear. So it'd be really nice to get some new music out there, new artists and songs that were chosen by the people, right? <laughs> so anyway, that's just kind of my thoughts on what I hope will will come of all of this. And yeah, we only have a few weeks left. I do think it'll start to really pick up 
some some traction here with the final few weeks. Okay, enough of the rambling. It's time to talk about the individual performances. So first up, we have Illinois. Justin Gesso with his song Lifeline. I first wrote down that I was getting some high school musical vibes. He's a great singer, uh, but it was the song almost had too fast of a tempo. I felt like he was constantly trying to like keep up with the song or like keep up with the beat. And then on top of all of that, he's doing a lot of like moving around and he goes to the piano and then he does like a, oh, what do you call that? It's not just like a scale, right? Where you, oh, what's that called? Where you like slide your hand down the keys. Hmm, that's a good question. Okay, one second. Glissando? Yeah, okay. Yeah, my first thought here in Glissando is more of like a, like chimes, but okay, that is, that is the word for the piano as well. Anyway, so a glissando, he does a glissando with his foot, <laughs> and then he gets onto the piano, and then steam starts shooting up, or smoke, or fog, whatever you call it, and there's just so much happening. I don't understand who's coming up with these performances and why they think more is better, you know? Just to have so much happening at once doesn't mean that it's exciting. It's just, it can be exhausting and too chaotic. And so those are the vibes I was getting, you know, first song of the night. I guess they wanted to start it off, start it off with a bang and they did. <laughs> And all of that aside, the song itself still didn't wow me. But I did I did love his voice. Um, I don't think this one will move on, but I think I would be interested in listening to some of his other stuff. Number two is California with um, Sweet Taboo is the name of the group. Their song was called Keys to the Kingdom. So the first thing I wrote is that finally there's a trio. And I think, I don't know. I don't know what it is about trios, especially trios of girls that do the full pop style of like they sing, they dance, they're pretty, you know, they usually have a lot of attitude. I'm thinking of like, uh, Eurovision with um, Hurricane. Was that the name of the group? Hurricane? And their song was called Loco Loco? Yeah, I think the name of the group was Hurricane. But similar vibes where, yeah, they're all stunning. They all sing. I guess, okay, so that is something that was different about this group was uh, two of the girls were the singers and then the third girl was the, the rapper of the group. Totally works. I thought the I thought the song was great, really catchy, the perfect amount of like, kind of like those sexual innuendos, but it could totally pass if it were on the radio. <laughs> they all were talking about how they are Latina and that how those influences are in the music that they write. And then moving on to the actual performance, I said everything about last week is out the window. So there's like 20 people on stage. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, they had a week off, so they went extra hard this week with all of the dancers on stage. Regardless, like they all absolutely killed this performance. They were great. And uh, yeah, there's a good reason why they held the top spot of the jury vote all the way up until the end. Yeah, and I also thought the rap was really good. They have great chemistry together. I love that there's trumpets and horns. Oh my gosh, if we were to 
make my quote unquote perfect song, we would have trumpets for sure. Or just a horn section. I don't know why horns just like get me going. (laughs) So horns, they're great. Uh, And I said that actually really added to their Latin style. So it was almost like a justified like celebration of their culture as well. I loved it. So I said, I definitely want this one to move on. And even though it ended up second in the jury vote, uh, I'd be shocked if this one didn't move on. Actually, good time to pull up Spotify. Let's see, I was looking at week four, but I've not checked week five yet for for, um, how many plays they have. Let me see. Okay, so currently, oh, I am surprised this song Wow, I'm actually really surprised. This song currently is has the fourth most plays. Uh, the songs that are currently ahead of it, first place is Midnight by Jason J. So yeah, we haven't gotten up, we haven't played any of these other ones yet, except for Lifeline. That's the third most. And Right in the Middle by John Morgan it has the second most plays right now. And then Natalie, which was the jury vote, that one is in fifth place. Interesting. I am surprised. I thought Keys to the Kingdom would have been higher up. But all right. So maybe I spoke too soon. I don't know if this one will move on. <laughs> we will see. All right, number three is Idaho, Andrew Shepard, and the song is called Steady Machine. He describes his style as rock and roll, but with a folk style of storytelling. And yeah, this might be some of the fewest notes I've ever written for a song. I wrote like two or three sentences. Um, I said... It's just a four chord song. I did appreciate that after the first chorus, the, the rest of the band joined in. So that was a nice surprise. It definitely made the song a bit more interesting. But otherwise, I said it's a generic, nice sounding song. And performed it well of course great voice you know it was to me it was a generic nice sounding song I did like that it almost had a feeling of like a 70s type of vibe to it uh but I didn't have much else to say other than that so unfortunately I do not think this one will move on and it doesn't matter how it fits the pieces don't come equipped. It's up to you to sharpen. After this performance, though, they revealed that Cisco was going to be in the competition. And I was so excited for it. <laughs> uh, I mean, growing up, the only thing I knew about Cisco was the thong song. And sure enough, they brought that up uh, during his interview. So I thought that was awesome, and I'm glad they got someone like Cisco to participate in the American Song Contest. So uh, his performance is coming up later, but I was excited, and I, I, I am glad that they've been bringing in some bigger names into the competition. Surprisingly, most of them haven't actually been very good. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Jewel. Sorry, Macy Gray. Uh, but I did actually like Cisco's, um, but I'll get to that later on. Okay, number four, New Mexico. The artist is Cali Sol, and his song was called Drop. He described his song as a song that'll make you move, and I thought that was totally accurate. And then I said, two seconds in, and I'm loving it. So before I go on my whole, like, oh my gosh, I love this song, like, that's where that's where this is headed. <laughs> I love this song. This is probably my second favorite. And I am I'm shocked by 
how how many listens this has. This has the lowest one on Spotify it, with only not even 4,000 plays yet. I don't get it. I think on YouTube, it was also really low. Let me find it here. Yeah, okay. And then on YouTube, it's also one of the lowest. There's two songs lower than him on YouTube. But I'm really surprised. I mean, I still don't really know who the, the main audience is for listening to this kind of stuff. You know, I would think if we're really going off of an American audience... I would think this song would do really well, but I have I have found it really interesting that when some of these more hip hop songs, there haven't been too many, but there's definitely been some. I think I'm mostly referring to week one with uh, UG Skywalking, and people didn't really like that either. But then I would see comments saying that like. I'm from Europe. I know I don't think Europeans would like this song in Eurovision, but I could see it doing well in the States. And I would agree with that. I would think this is a very similar type of song where I think this song would do really well in America, but the numbers are not showing. So I'm confused. I loved this song. For me, it was just the electronic type of beat or however you describe it. I cannot describe that one little instrumental thing that's going on in the background. Okay, this might be good to consider is if, if you're just watching the performance and you didn't see the full episode or you didn't see the interview, then I could see why this song might throw you off a bit. Because in his interview, he talks about how like, oh, when you think of New Mexico, people will ask like, oh, are there like aliens or something? Is that where like Area 51 happened? Was that New Mexico? <laughs> oh no, I'm not sure if I'm getting that right. Uh, well, anyway, talking about aliens and then in the performance, there were aliens. But if you're just watching the video on YouTube, you missed all of that in the interview. So maybe that would throw it, throw you off a bit. <laughs> like, why are there aliens everywhere and dancing around? That is kind of weird. So, okay. I am just now realizing that could be throwing people off. But in context, I, I was like, okay, I'll allow it. This all makes sense now that I've seen his interview. Uh... <laughs> I liked that they try to add some effects with like the fisheye lens, you know, I feel like that really ties into more of that 90s hip hop music video style. They loved fisheye lenses back then. <laughs> Don't know why. Um, and and then I was also super impressed with the fact that um, the majority of the performance was kind of, I think like him. I'm trying to remember exactly, but him kind of like walking around, going backwards and through different things. But toward, he's like facing the camera the whole time, which means that the camera guy was also having to do the same thing. And I thought that was really impressive. You get one shot to kind of do all of those movements and not stumble and really kind of keep focused on each other. Props to both of them. Camera guy included. <laughs> Suddenly they even had like a big finale to the song, which I honestly was not expecting because it almost sounded like one of those hip hop songs where they could have just faded it out at the end and called it done. And side, side note, one of my biggest pet peeves are songs that fade out. <laughs> so I was very happy to hear, you know, they, they took it to that next level added a little bit of a bigger outro, closing to the song, and I thought it was good. So I said, I definitely want this one to move on. And now I'm shocked to find out that it is not getting the same amount of attention that I thought it would. So, and I don't think this one did well at all with the jury, but come on, this jury has been all over the place. It's like, I'm only agreeing with the jury about half the time. He did better than I thought with the jury. He ended up at seventh place out of 11, 
But I think when they announced him, uh, I think he might have been at the bottom when they announced him and the jury. But okay. Like being seventh by the jury, I think he could move on, but not by these numbers. I don't think he's going to move on. (sighs) Disappointing. But on a very exciting note, you guys, New Boot Goofin is back. They announced that New Boot Goofin is the first wild card entry into the semifinals, as he should be. It is, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? It was a travesty. That's way too dramatic. So that's not the word I want to use. A disgrace. That's what I wanted to say. It was a disgrace that the jury ever put him second to last. And that's happened with several other artists as well. Um, So I am thrilled to know that the audience has spoken and he claimed that first wild card spot. Now, are we going to run into the same issue in the semifinals? Do the jury vote in the semifinals? Because then we're right back to where we started. And if the jury does not like him, they're just going to put him at the bottom again. So I'm already upset. (laughs) But I don't even know how the voting works. Because of course I don't. I feel like they have not clearly explained any of the voting. Maybe. If they have, I've totally missed it. So... I feel like each week I'm learning more about the voting, but they still haven't like explicitly said how it's all working out. I don't know. So that was really exciting, especially um, they did say that he's received over 700,000 streams worldwide. And my first thought was like, what? Where did that number come from? Because I know on Spotify, he, let me find it. On Spotify, he has 390,000. And currently, the fifth most plays on Spotify um, out of all the 56 songs. But then I thought about it like, okay, if people are using like Apple Music or the other music streaming services that I I don't use, then okay, that's where that number is coming from. I'm clearly like, what? There's things other than Spotify? (laughs) I wonder if they're including YouTube in that as well. Although, you guys... I was looking for his performance on YouTube and I couldn't find it. Explain that. Why is there so much going on? I am only finding week two of the American Song Contest and later. I am not finding week one. You guys, someone explain why things keep appearing and disappearing. (laughs) I don't get it. Yeah, New Boot Goofin is not on the NBC YouTube channel right now. Yeah, I am using an American VPN because, yeah, if you since I'm in Europe, when I was just logged into Czech Republic, all of the American Song Contest videos were gone except for like the ads. But none of the performances were available. But if you use a VPN, uh, you're able to watch the performances except for week one, apparently. So. All right. Moving on. Number five, Missouri. Performer's name is Haley, and her song was called Better Things. She told us it was a country pop song. She was on a show called Songland. That's what I typed out, but I wasn't sure if I heard that right. Was it called Songland? Oh my gosh, I think it is, but it's one word, Songland. She explained that she was on uh, Songland and that Martina McBride had chosen her song, whatever this means. I've never seen the show, didn't know it existed. But that made me very excited to hear this song. She also said that this was one of the most honest songs she's ever written. And then, uh uh-oh. Yeah, this one... I was really looking forward to it, right? I was like, oh man, she was on Songland. Like, this is going to be amazing. But yeah, (laughs) I said, if you've seen my other videos, then you might already know what I'm going to criticize. Can you guys guess? Uh, The biggest thing was that she was stuck in one place the whole time. And like, more than that, she like... The staging didn't make sense either. Like, so the song starts and we see her in this light up circle, which I thought 
looked great, you know, really visually pleasant to look at. And then as the song starts and she doesn't go anywhere, then I was like, okay, well, why though? Why are you in a circle? And why are you in one place? And I think I'm going to always complain about that. Although, as I'm saying this, you know, the last song or uh, the girl that moves on, Ada Leanne, I hope I'm saying her name right. I think she's also in one place the entire time, but... I don't know, sometimes it works and sometimes it feels very stiff. And I think maybe because she's literally inside of this circle, maybe that's why it felt stiff. It's almost like they forget that they can kind of move with with that position. It's a lot different to just be like stiff and singing instead of like trying to kind of move within the circle, right? So maybe that's what I'm like hoping for when I see them standing still the whole time. But now in terms of the song, I thought that the lyrics are really good. It seems like she's really got a strong suit for writing lyrics. And that's also what M Martina McBride said when she chose the song on Songland was that the lyrics really like you know, captivated her. So uh, yeah, that's incredible that she's able to write such good lyrics. She seems very young as well, so she could definitely have a long career in songwriting, which is great. She clearly has a knack for songwriting, and I think that this could definitely be a career for her if she's already made it onto two TV shows for songwriting. So. I think she will be finding lots of success with songwriting, but this song, I don't think it's going to move on. Number six is American Samoa, and the artist was Tanel. Her song was called Full Circle. Uh, so if you saw my last video, I mentioned that I am super addicted to GeoGuessr right now. And GeoGuessr has taught me so much, including the location of American Samoa. I did not realize how far uh, to, like, in the ocean these islands were. I thought, because we've had, you know, Puerto Rico and other islands that are just off the coast of Florida. But even, like, Guam surprised me. And Guam is also in this episode. They are closer to Asia than the US and that really surprised me. I just want to pull it up on a map real quick. Yeah, what's also been fun about GeoGuessr is like so yeah, learning where these islands are but also being able to locate them when they don't even like you really have to start zooming in for these islands to even show up. So I feel really smart when I can start finding <laughs> finding these tiny dots in the middle of this ocean here. Who knew? I'm just learning so much and I love that. That's also why I love Eurovision. I've learned so much about Europe just from all the countries that are in the competition. So, okay, I gotta stop. We're, you guys are not here to watch me try and figure out geography. <laughs> all right, I loved this performance. Um, I, first thing I have to acknowledge is we have a song literally called Full Circle. Why didn't we use the circle from the last performance? I said I loved her energy and just the whole thing. It was like her song really did captivate her, uh, like her culture, but it was still very catchy. It's like you wanted to dance along with it. I thought the staging on this was really great because they had her go from, you know, center stage and then over to one area where there were already people, like dancers, I guess, were waiting there. And I just thought the whole thing flowed so well. Um, and I said, I really, really wanted this to move on. Let's check. Now, I am so surprised this song is not doing well with the listens. Like this one's towards the bottom this one's maybe like eighth out of 11th right now it doesn't even have 10,000 plays which suddenly I'm thinking oh no will this one move on 
Now, YouTube, let me see what YouTube has to say. Because sometimes the views and the listens are completely different from each other. This song has one of the most listens from the week. So that's encouraging. Yeah, okay. So I'm feeling confident again. I think this one will move on. Overall, it was a great performance. No complaints. It was fun, great singing, and it had good staging. So it had the full package. So I really do think that that's, yeah, it has all the elements to be voted through from the audience. All right, number seven is North Carolina. John Morgan, the song is called Right in the Middle. So he does country music. He said he was one of the co-writers for If I Didn't Love You. Is that what it was called? I think with Carrie Underwood. It's like, if I didn't love you. Carrie Underwood and Jason Aldean. Songwriters, John Morgan. There it is. Wow, that's huge. Wow, good for him. Wait, what? That's like a really current song. Song of the year for 2022. I thought this song was like three years old. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> okay, well, I didn't realize how recent that was. Well, anyway, that is huge. And if he's getting royalties from that, he is set for life. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Okay, so of course, pumped to hear this song. Uh... But then it starts out, and then my first thought was like, I mean, yeah, it's a country song, which means I am not a good judge of country music. We've had quite a few country songs at this point, and I always kind of end up saying, it's a country song. Um, it's just not my favorite genre, so it's hard for me to be like excited about a country song. But I did say he has a great voice, and the thing that really was an indicator for me. It was like, okay, if someone were to play this on the radio right now, I wouldn't think anything of, anything of it. I'd be like, yes, this is a current pop country song on the radio. So to me, that was a good sign that it fit right in. Like, yeah, I would have never guessed that this was like a debut song from a debut artist type of thing, you know? I said it was really chill. He sang it great. And then even though it's not for me, I said if there are enough country fans watching, this would definitely move on. And then it cut back to Kelly Clarkson and she said she loved it and that it was a hit song. So I'll take her word for it because I think she does like country music and she's from Texas. So uh, even though she compliments every song she hears, but this one she genuinely was like, I love this song. <laughs> So, and we got to check the stats. How's this one doing? What was this song even called? <laughs> right in the middle currently has the second most plays and it got third from the jury. So if I have to guess, that one is definitely moving on. All right, number eight is Vermont. Josh Panda is his stage name, and the song was called Roller Coaster. He said he really likes to sing soul music. The song was uplifting. He wanted it to be like a sing-along song. And there were definitely parts of the song I, I liked. I liked how quick he was with the lyrics during the verses. That was a nice surprise. I think anytime you get fast lyrics, that can always be a little bit of a standout because it's hard to kind of come up with words quickly. Wow, exactly the opposite of what I'm doing right now. I can't think of any words right now. And don't you ever give in? Gotta dig a little deeper when the hill is getting steeper. You don't wanna be the leader. And it feels like it's too hard to climb. Okay, 
I found the song I was wanting to reference, and because of copyright, you guys better believe I've already been hit with some copyright stuff, but I've been able to argue my way out of some of them. <laughs> I couldn't get out of a Katy Perry copyright claim from like two weeks ago, which is ridiculous. Sampling like eight seconds of a Katy Perry song, like, yeah, I'm really, really affecting your ability to get listeners. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, <laughs> the song I was referring to for this song, where he has kind of like the quick lyrics, was Fair Naked Ladies. One week, where it's like, been one week since you looked at me. And then the whole verse is like, Ooh, my impressions are not good this week. <laughs> anyway, you guys know what I'm talking about. That's what this song reminded me of. He clearly has a great stage presence. He's been doing this a while. He said that his kids loved this song. Uh, and, you know, I really loved his energy. He got super into the song and he was able to hit some crazy high notes. So overall, really well done job. Overall, a really good job. <laughs> you guys help me. Why am I not able to talk this week? Uh, <laughs> And I did actually think it was really cute. Um, he gave a couple gifts to Kelly Clarkson and Snoop Dogg of some teddy bears. And they were like dressed to look like them. And the Snoop Dogg one, he actually had like the customized Super Bowl outfit. And it was really cute. So props to him for coming up with that gift. And apparently the, the teddy bear shop, I think was a local shop from Vermont. So uh, now this song, it's it's ranking bottom in terms of all the, l no, it's not. I'm still upset that drop, Kali Soul, is actually the lowest amount of listens. What am I thinking of? This one is towards the bottom. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, bottom three on Spotify and bottom two on YouTube. So it's not looking promising. Okay, and then the jury vote, it was eighth place. So I don't think this one is gonna move on, but he did a great job. All right, number nine, Guam, Jason J. Song was Midnight. He described it as island reggae and alternative. And I do know where Guam is because of GeoGuessr. <laughs> I knew it was in the Pacific Ocean, but I did not realize it was so far. It's like, yeah, way closer to Asia than I realized. Um, okay, my notes for this song. I said, yes, his voice, I love it. So pure and strong. <laughs> I'm laughing at my own adjectives. I really wish I had a larger vocabulary sometimes. Like, I just wish I had a thesaurus stuck in my brain because I feel like I end up just saying very similar words all the time. But anyway, uh, I said I was loving it. Definitely reggae, which is not my normal preference, I guess. But I mean, clearly it still fits into the type of music I do like. So, um, all right. I think the entire performance, they had put this VHS effect you know, on the camera. I thought it was unnecessary, you know? I guess I am surprised at how cheesy these camera effects have been. And I don't know, they either need to make them better or just leave them out because it's not working. I feel like it keeps taking away from the actual performance. So VHS effect, not my favorite. And then going to the actual song elements, I said he switched it up by doing like a lower verse. And I thought that was a great variety. I think, yeah, if you guys have been listening to these episodes, sometimes that's maybe my one complaint is like there isn't variety. So when there is something that switches up the song a bit, I definitely appreciate it and it stands out. 
Uh, now, now my one complaint, oh, it looks like I have a second complaint coming up. My one complaint is that the ending was abrupt and that drives me nuts. Now, I did say check the studio recording. So one second here. Okay, it's also abrupt in the studio recording. So that is also one of my pet peeves. It's the exact opposite of a song that fades out. I can't stand either of them. <laughs> when it's an abrupt ending, because you think there's going to be another verse and you're like, nope, that was it. And Eurovision runs into this way too often because of the three minute time limit. So they'll literally be like, it is three minutes, you're done. And they'll somehow cut the song off when it did not feel like the time to cut the song off. This song... This song had an extra 15 seconds that they could have used to have a, a softer ending, but no. Then my second complaint has nothing to do with him. The jury put this at the bottom. You know why this is gonna this is driving me nuts. This got bottom from the jury. It is currently the most plays on Spotify. This is the one that has the highest amount of plays by like a, a considerable margin too. Uh, and then same with, got to check YouTube. How are these numbers doing here? And it has the most video plays on YouTube. But will this one move on? Probably not because of these stupid jury votes. Because even if it's number one audience and bottom jury, that's not going to go through, right? Because then it would end up at like fifth or sixth place, right? Oh, that makes me mad. Now, the only redeeming thing could maybe be the wild card, which I think they're basing the wild card off of plays, something like that, which is a very unfair metric like system of doing that, right? Because the songs like New Boot Goofin was week one. It's had the most time. Unless they are, unless they somehow calculate it by, you know oh, this song was up for a week and it got this many plays. Like, unless they're trying to figure it out that way, but it's still, it's not fair. It's not fair. I will complain about this. <laughs> uh, I just hope that the that the songs that should move on are the songs that move on, you know? And if this is the song that is number one in two places, this song better move on, right? And... I don't know if it will with this, with the jury vote. So I was shocked that this one got bottom and it got bottom. Yeah, it was, he was the ninth performer. So there were still a couple acts after him, but he stayed at the bottom for the rest of the episode. I'm just over the All right, number 10 is Michigan, Ada Leanne. Her song was called Natalie. Whew, okay, lots to talk about with this one. So as we know, this was the jury vote. And I am, I'm okay with it, but I don't think it should have been, if that makes sense. Like I would have been fine if this had been more like second or third. I do think that like Sweet Taboo, because it held the top spot for so long and because I'm biased and I like that song more. I thought Sweet Taboo would pull through, but I will say I was blown away by her, uh, by Ada Leanne, because now they said she was 17, but then in the interview she was 16. So her birthday must have been recent. Um, so she's 16 slash 17 and I got, okay, I'm about to give her a lot of crap. And then I'll justify it because I'll praise her a lot here in a moment. But, you know, she said she's inspired by Billie Eilish and Olivia Rodrigo. And it was like, I guess to me, it was like cliche. But it also makes sense if those are, you know, your age group. They're only a few years older than she is. So I can see why those would be your inspiration. But you guys, she said her song is about a girl who gets cheated on. She is 16. 
like, am I already just getting too old where I'm like a 16 year old saying they've been cheated on just makes me want to roll my eyes cheated on is just like to me I'm like people get cheated on and when they're 16 like maybe because that just wasn't me in high school at all like I'm just if you you're cheated on by a teenage boy like ugh. <laughs> I feel like you were not missing out on anything but also I get it I've also been like heartbroken as a teenager so Like, I'm making fun of her, even though deep down I know that I would probably be writing the same song when I was 16. I don't know. Not that I've... I would have been been lucky to even, like, have a boyfriend that's 16. Let's be real. So, (laughs) all right. I'm done making fun of her for that because then she actually started singing. And I was like, holy crap. I take it all back. She's great. So... I was really blown away by her vocals. You just never would have guessed she was a a 16 slash 17 year old with that type of voice, that type of confidence. Like she really seemed like she's been doing this for years. And she was, it was another perfect example of like, if I were to hear this on the radio right now with Billie Eilish before her and Olivia Rodrigo after her on the radio, I'd be like, yep. She is already a pop star. On a Friday night when you were talking, I was watching and crying in the corner. But it didn't matter. I feel like even out of the five weeks, like I could see her actually becoming a big pop star because of this competition. So good luck to her. I do think that she has what it takes. She's got that it factor. Like I think she can absolutely keep up with the big dogs you know now the song it was cheesy it was angsty uh but she sang it really well yeah you know even the jury member that came up at the end compared her to taylor swift and yeah it like there is something that sounds almost identical to a taylor swift song the song isn't for me but that's fine i think she'll do well regardless I said the staging was beautiful. She's so good. I said, somebody give this girl a contract. (laughs) She's ready. And I did think that the song needed a bigger boost at the end. I felt like we were we were lacking one extra like big chorus or something like that. The only other part of the song that I was I didn't really like. I don't know. It's just Maybe it's because I still don't know who Natalie is. And I don't like a lot of songs that use actual names. Is that weird? Maybe it's because then I can't like relate to the song. It's like if you're talking about someone specifically by name, it's like, oh, well, now I can't imagine myself in in that position or something. So not a huge fan of the name of the song, but whatever. None of this actually matters. She did move on. She's the jury vote. So it'll be exciting to see how she does uh, in the semifinals. Last up, we have Marilyn and Cisco. (laughs) Cisco's song is called It's Up. Now, in his interview, so we know he had his big hit, The Thong Song, which is, I mean, that song actually... You could say it's legendary. I don't use that word ever, but that's the first so- uh, first word that comes to mind because the thong song, I feel like no one's written anything like it. And he has some lines in that song that still make me laugh. Like that song came out when I was a child. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know what a thong was when that song came out. When did that come out? Like 99? Let me see here. 99. I got it. So (laughs) I was like seven years old when this song came out. Um, And then as I got older and would hear the song again, I was like, that's what he's talking about. Okay. And I just got to say my favorite line of that song. He says, she had dumps like a truck, truck, truck. Thighs like what, 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 baby move your butt, butt, butt. 
I think I say it again. Okay, anyway. <laughs> He's talking about she had dumps like a truck. Please tell me he's talking about her butt. You know, right? It's weird. It's like, it is the thong song. But surely he knows what a dump is in other contexts, right? And to this day, I do not know if, if what kind of dumps he's talking about. I was so happy that they somehow convinced Cisco to be in the competition. And in his interview, I noted that I think he might be the first and only contestant to actually be like, I'm going to win this thing. Like so far, everyone's just had a very like, like no one's really brought out that competitive side to it. Everyone's just more like, I'm so happy to be here. I'm happy I'm representing my state. And Cisco comes in and he's like, I will win this. <laughs> and then he got like second to last from the jury. Um, but, you know, we can't trust the jury with anything. So um, the performance was crazy. There was a lot going on. Now, I don't know any other music by Cisco minus the thong song. So maybe this is just his style now. But uh, it was almost just like more of a dance EDM, electronic type of song. I hope I'm getting the right genres there. Uh, I said I actually liked it, though. But I thought that this type of like this performance almost felt like it was meant for the Grammys or it's meant for like an award show performance. It didn't feel like it fit into a song competition. And I think maybe it was because it was so over the top and all of the all of the lights and the dancing. And I don't think there was there wasn't maybe too much of the actual vocals. I'm trying to remember the, the like the song part. But I mean, but he was great at dancing. That was a nice surprise. I had no idea that Cisco could dance. Oh, and then this song also really needed another like minute at the end of it. Let me just double check here. Nope, this song is also 245 on Spotify. This song could have definitely had another minute and then I think it would have been perfect. What I will say that I've noticed on Spotify, and this is something I've really liked, is that the songs on Spotify are... I guess maybe the the proper length that it's meant to be. So it's not restricted to three minutes on the actual song on, on Spotify. Now, almost every song still is under three minutes, but we do have one like Steady Machine is actually almost four minutes long. Right in the middle is actually three and a half minutes long. There was one from a couple weeks ago that's like close to five minutes. So I'm just, I love knowing that, okay, yes, live performance, we keep it to three minutes, but that doesn't necessarily mean the song is that long. Because yeah, sometimes I really wish the song did have that extra verse, did have that instrumental at the end. So I'm glad that they do that um, if they think it's necessary. But now I'm a little disappointed when the songs that I wish had an extra verse don't have it. So anyway. But overall, this song from Cisco was certainly different from anything else I feel like that we'd heard on the whole competition. And that was also the last song out of the 56 entries. So, uh, before the episode ended, we did hear from a jury member, which I had mentioned earlier. The jury member came from New York, had something, some connection to iHeartRadio, and that's when we learned that the winner of this competition will be placed in rotation on iHeartRadio, uh, which is insane. That's an amazing prize, I guess. Um, but I did say I do hope they're not going to just say it's only for the winner, because um, there's plenty of songs that I think could absolutely fit right into radio right now. And that's when we also found out that Ada Leanne took the top spot away from Sweet Taboo. She is moving on and 
I mean, yeah, I thought she was great. So let's see here. Now, my favorites, I have, I think I have five favorites, which is like almost half of them. My favorites from this week were California with Sweet Taboo, New Mexico, Cali Sol, American Samoa, Tanel, Guam, Jason J, and Miss Michigan, Ada Leanne. Okay, so we are moving on to the semifinals, which I'm excited for. It's going to be really fun to see to, to see if they've changed the performances at all. They'll do that sometimes with Melody Festivalen, where the performances will make some adjustments by the time it gets to the final. And I think that's great. They should be making those adjustments and, you know, really just trying to strive for the best performance that they can. So... So now that we're moving into the semifinal, I'm I'm just so excited. We have lots of predictions to make, and it will be nice actually to kind of have less to focus on at this point because 56 songs was a lot, <laughs> but they've been great. It's been really fun seeing what everyone's coming up with, and it'll be fun to now see, you know, the people that were voted through see how they all do against each other. Because I feel like week one was so long ago now. So anyway, what did you guys think? And who are your favorites? And anything else you guys want to talk about? Let me know. Leave a comment. And next time I film, I'll be back in the US. So, okay. Well, thank you guys so much for, for watching. And if you could like, comment, and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Otherwise, I'll see you guys very soon. Hey, <laughs>